welcome <coughs> let us look at the application of the engineering bernoulli equation to a piping network in this class and we are going to do that through uh, an actual problem okay let me state the problem first and then tell you how to go about solving that and it's just application of bernoulli equation with associated aspects and you would be able to pick up how to use the engineering bernoulli equation in this situation that is the piping network a cleaning liquid used in many bioprocess industries needs to be piped through the pipeline system above the ground as shown in the figure okay this is the ground and this is the piping network or the pipeline system the pipeline system consists of 50 meters of 12 inch nominal diameter pipe okay this entire length thicker is 50 meters and 20 meters of 8 inch nominal diameter pipe don't worry about these terms as yet i'll come to that all elbows are, are standard and flanged and the material used for the piping is schedule 80 wrought iron pipe determine the pressure drop needed between points 1 and 2 to maintain a flow rate of 0.05 meter cube per second what is the pumping power that is needed to maintain the flow rate the density is given and the viscosity is given of the fluid of the cleaning fluid that is used uh, that is pumped through the piping network okay. okay here you have some terms that uh, you may not have seen earlier there's something called a nominal diameter there's something called a schedule 80 okay these are terms that are uh, widely used in the practice that involves pipes okay so these are terms that emerged out of the practice convenience okay? you know convenient means of practicing things the nominal diameter especially uh, refers to something that would help people put together pipes that would fit each other well uh, a long time back you know they, they need not measure the outer diameter or the inner diameter and check whether it's going to fit and so on and so forth because the way of attaching pipes is you put pipe and pipe together and put something on top of it a sleeve maybe a nipple maybe and so on and so forth that's one way of connecting pipes so if you need to connect pipes then you need to worry about the relationship between their diameters and you could uh, easily connect pipes of the same nominal diameter so the nominal diameter is some uh, measure which may not refer to the actual diameter in any way uh, i mean actual diameter of the pipes that is so a 12 inch nominal diameter is a 12 inch nominal diameter 8 inch nominal diameter is smaller than the 12 inch nominal diameter uh, for the for example for the 12 inch nominal diameter the internal diameter is actually 0.2889 meters okay for an 8 inch nominal diameter it is 0.1937 meters and this you can get is listed in uh, handbooks in tables of uh, pipe properties in handbooks uh, it is given in fluid flow books at the end some tables are given it is given Perry's chemical engineers handbook and so on and so forth for our situation i've given you the numbers here otherwise people just talk about uh, a 12 inch nominal diameter you need to go back to this table to figure out what exactly the inner diameter of the pipe is for our calculations for our calculations we need this inner diameter area and so on and so forth right also these are valid only for schedule 80 pipes okay schedule number relates to uh, the strength of the pipe in some way um, let's not get too too much into it uh, it is some pressure versus um, the its ability to take pressure and so on and so forth so schedule 80 let's just take it as schedule 80 it has certain set of properties and for a schedule 80 pipe for a 12 inch nominal diameter id would be this much and the 8 8 inch nominal diameter schedule 80 pipe the id would be this much so the schedule number refers to certain 
um, mechanical properties of the pipe, the nominal diameter refers to some uh, relevant uh, dimension of the pipe, if, I, if you can say that. It may not refer to the actual dimensions of the pipe. Okay. That being clear, also you recall while if you want to find the friction factor from the fanning friction factor chart or friction factor versus the Reynolds number, you needed to know the uh, roughness factor okay, or the roughness lengths and so on and so forth, roughness factor interchangeably used. So, the roughness factor for a wrought iron uh, pipe typically is 4.6 into 10 power minus 5 meters. So, the K by D you need to take to be able to find out the friction factor. Okay. So, that is the situation here. So, let us go through it step by step. We need to find delta P or P2 minus P1 and the pumping power. Okay, that is what we need to find here, that is what has been given in this problem. Uh, determine the pressure drop needed between points 1 and 2 to maintain a flow rate of 0.05 meter cubed and also what is the pumping power that is needed to maintain the flow rate. These are the two things that are needed, that is what is given here, delta P and pumping power. We will first look at delta P. From the engineering Bernoulli equation, uh, we can get delta P, that you know. So, let us apply the engineering Bernoulli equation between points 1 and 2 in the piping network. We can apply it across cross sections as you know. So, delta P by rho plus delta V squared by 2 plus D delta Z plus or D delta H, Z is H, FL hat plus WS hat equals 0. There is no pump as a part of the pumping network here. If you see carefully, there is no pump as a part of the system. Okay. So, and this is we are focusing on the part that does not have a pump. Therefore, there is no shaft work. Okay, only when a pump is present typically or when something else is present, you need to worry about shaft work. So, here there is no shaft work and therefore, let us start filling in the other terms in the engineering Bernoulli equation. We know the density 870 kilogram per meter cubed and therefore, the velocity is the volumetric flow rate. Uh, not therefore, the velocity is nothing but the volumetric flow rate by the area. You know that the area times the velocity is the volumetric flow rate. Volumetric flow rate required is 0 0.05. Area, if you can calculate from the uh, inner diameter that was given there, pi d squared by 4, that will turn out to be 0 0.0297 meter squared and therefore, V2 turns out to be 1.7 meter per second. V1 similarly turns out to be for the same volumetric flow rate, the area pi d squared by 4 for that particular diameter, the 12 inch nominal diameter pipe turns out to be 0 0.763 meter per second. Okay. And this one was 4.5 if you recall the uh, one end, the other one was 5 meters. Okay. If you recall that figure, this is z1 from the datum level, this is Z2. Okay. So, we are filling in the various terms. We have filled in, we are just counting or listing whatever we know. We know that Z2 is 4.5 and Z1 is 5 meters. So, we have a handle on this term, we have a handle on this term and therefore, if we know this, then we can find delta P which is one of the things that is needed. We know the density, right. So, straightforward or it seems straightforward. Let us see how to do that. For a pipe and different pipe fittings, valves and so on and so forth, you know you have a gate valve, globe valve, uh, uh, 90 degree bend, a 45 degree bend, a 180 degree bend, okay. All these things, valves, bends and other aspects of the piping ne network apart from the straight pipe, these are called pipe fittings. Okay. So, for pipe fittings, the frictional losses would be very different. You know, when the fluid is changing its direction of flow, that is going to cause a lot of frictional losses. Okay. Especially 180 degrees and all that is going to cause a lot more frictional losses maybe. Okay. And when it goes through a valve, it is going to cause a lot more frictional losses compared to maybe a straight pipe, depends on the situation, straight pipe. And 
the friction loss for a pipe fitting is given with this formulation a certain kf which de depends on the pipe fitting times v average squared by 2 okay we've been given the same form so that you could integrate various things together so you take the frictional loss for each pipe fitting separately and these are energy losses energy scalar therefore you can add uh, each energy together each energy loss together to get the total energy loss so it's here it says here so the kf values you need to know to be able to do this we we'll, we can know the v average from the volumetric flow rate the area and so on and so forth but you need to know the kf values the kf values for the various pipe fittings of relevance here and some more are as follows for a straight pipe it is 4 fl by d okay recall the loss in a straight pipe 4 fl by d v squared by 2 so kf is nothing but 4 fl by d 180 degree bend is 2.2 90 degree elbow is 0.9 45 degree elbow is 0.4 a t joint okay is 1.8 a wide open globe valve is 15 a wide open gate valve is 0.2 a sudden contraction when a pipe suddenly changes diameter to the lower diameter a sudden contraction is 0.4 times 1 minus a b by a a these are the areas i'll tell you what b and a are in a minute for a sudden expansion is 1 minus a b by a a squared these two can actually be derived by using by applying the engineering bernoulli equation ha huh. v average you know you, you need k f times v average squared by 2 to get the friction losses this v average is actually taken at b so if you take the v average at b this formulation holds b happens to be the smaller diameter a happens to be the larger diameter irrespective of whether it's a contraction or an expansion so this is the way to apply uh, the formula to find out the frictional losses in this case this nothing but uh, whatever comes out of uh, your engineering bernoulli equation application and here the friction loss can be conveniently calculated as you recall the figure see you have a gate valve here okay this is straightforward in the 12 inch piping network you have a 90 degree bend here and a 90 degree bend here okay you have a sudden contraction here you have a 45 degree bend here you have another 45 degree bend here okay so this is the these are the various pipe fittings there's a 1990 gate valve sudden contraction 45 45 and so on that's that's those are the pipe fittings here so in our case The friction losses is Kf average V average squared by 2 for the 12 inch alone plus 4 fl by d V average squared by 2 for the 12 inch pipe. I have just separated out the straight pipe from the rest. That's all. Okay. You could also consider the straight pipe as one of uh, the regular fitting, and uh, then it will just be a sum of Kf V average squared by 2. So if I consider the other fittings to be separate, then sum over the fittings of Kf V average squared by 2 plus the straight pipe loss 4f l by d v average squared by 2. Of course, the 12 inch uh, losses are going to be different from the 8 inch losses. Therefore, we have separated the two. So, pipe fittings for the 12 inch loss, the loss there plus the loss in the straight pipe region of the 12 inch pipe plus the loss in the pipe fittings in the 8 inch pipe plus the loss in the straight pipe section of the 8 inch pipe. The, this is the total loss. Now to find F, the friction factor for finding out the loss in the straight pipe, we can use the Reynolds number. Uh, the friction factor chart which uses the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number for the 12 inch pipe, if you substitute the density, the average velocity, diameter by rho, it turns out to be 1.39 into 10 power 5. Okay. Definitely turbulent. Right? More than 4000, definitely turbulent. 
That's what I mentioned earlier. In the industry, predominantly the flows are turbulent. For an 8 inch pipe, the same Reynolds number turns out to be 1.47 times 10 power 5. And so, for the reading the appropriate curve on the friction factor chart, we need k by d. We have the x coordinate here. These two are the relevant x coordinates that we need to use. And once we know which part, which curve to read on by fixing the k by d, we can directly get the friction factor. So, k by d is nothing but point, it's 4.6 into 10 power minus 5 divided by the diameter of the 12 inch nominal diameter pipe which happens to be 0 0.2889 and therefore k by d happens to be 1.6 into 10 power minus 4. So, whichever is closest to that you could take and k by d for the 8 inch pipe turns out to be 2.37 into 10 power minus 4. So, what I would like you to do is go back to the friction factor chart, okay, take a copy of whatever was given, whatever was shown here or you can go to the book and check and then read off the friction factor from the friction factor chart. Okay. Can you go ahead and do it? Stop the video here, go back, do that, whatever time it takes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, and then come back and uh, continue the video. Go ahead, please. From the friction factor chart, you would have found for these Reynolds numbers and these k by d values, the friction factor for the 12 inch pipe happens to be 0.0045 and the friction factor for the 8 inch pipe happens to be 0.0445. Pipe fittings we have as I told you earlier, 2 in the 12 inch, the 90 degree bends two 45 degree elbows in the 8 inch, one gate valve, we can consider that to be fully open, one 8 inch, sudden, 12 inch to 8 inch sudden contraction. Okay. So, the Kf for the 12 inch, uh, the first term is this, Kf for the 8, sorry, the Kf for the 12 inch total is this, 2 into 0 0.9, the 90 degree elbow is 0.9, the Kf value the um, gate valve is in the 12 inch thing that is 0 0.2 and then for the 8 inch you have a 40, 2 45 degree elbow so 2 into 0 0.4 sudden contraction is 0 0.4 times 1 minus AB by AA. So, you put all that together you get 1.02 for 8 inch and 2 for 12 inch. So, we have a handle on the KF values and if you substitute all the above values into the engineering Bernoulli equation. We have delta P by rho plus V2 squared minus V1 squared by 2 plus G times delta H plus this is the um, friction factor losses equals plus uh, yeah these are all losses there is no shaft work anyway. So, only the losses uh, need to be considered. This is the last term which consists of this, the straight section, this is the fitting section loss for the 12 inch pipe both and this is for the uh, hold on. this is um, straight pipe, yes, oh okay. This is the straight pipe 12 inch, straight pipe 8 inch this is the fitting loss for the 12 inch, this is the fitting loss for the 8 inch. So, you put that all together and then if you back out delta p, it will turn out to be this which turns delta p turns out to be minus 1626.9 pascals or minus 1.63 kilopascals. So, this is your delta P here. So, P2 minus P1 is what is what this is. So, P1 minus P2 is what is necessary for the flow to occur that is positive. So, the pumping power required is nothing but the pressure drop times the volumetric flow rate. You work out the units here, you will figure out that this indeed turns out to be the power units which is the actual power that is required here. 
V naught the minus delta P which turns out to be 1626.9 times the volumetric flow rate that is given in the problem 0.05 meter cube per second that turns out to be 81.3 watts okay, or 0.081 kilowatts. This is the pumping power that was required. So, we found both the delta P, the pressure drop and the pumping power that is required in this case. So, that is an application of the engineering Bernoulli equation to the flow in cylindrical pipes okay, with fittings. Okay, we saw how to handle the fittings also and uh, hopefully that gave you an idea as to how to approach these problems. Okay. It is a very practical situation here. You have a piping network, you have a piping network in all kinds of situations and this gives you a way to directly design the piping network, what amount of pressure drop you need to cause a certain amount of flow for a given piping network and what is the pumping power that is required so that you can choose an appropriate pump for this situation. Okay. Okay. Let us stop here for this class. When we continue, I will show you another application of the friction factor, another situation in which uh, we uh, uh, in which we can use a friction factor for that situation to calculate relevant aspects. See you then.